up in this spot. So I'll ask if there's any changes to our agenda this, e this morning. Through you, Mr. Chair, there is an addition. Uh, Detachment Commander Hemrick would like to speak to uh, detachment seized and stolen property. So we'll add that as item 6.6 .6 to the agenda. Okay, we have a motion to approve yep. it. It reads that the agenda be approved as amended. We have a mover, Jim, seconder, Jamie. Any, any questions with respect to the agenda? All in favor? It's carried. Next, we'll move. The next item is the minutes of the previous meeting, uh, May 23rd, 2023. We have a motion to adopt the minutes. It reads that the minutes of the meeting held May 23rd, 2023 be adopted as presented. Thank you. We have the mover, Jamie, seconder, Jim. All in favor of the motion. If there's no concerns of the minutes, it's carried. Uh, is there any uh, disclosure of a pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we'll move to the uh, item six for items for discussion. 6.1, uh, the uh, SD and G OPP report on January, March, 2023. I'll ask Mark to start us off. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Uh, certainly from the OPP report, I would like to uh, just start at page number one with our, um, with our report, and I'd just like to highlight a few things in my detachment commander uh, message. Uh, so certainly are uh, very happy to see that we had a very successful uh, winter motorized snow vehicle patrol season. Although the season was short, the, day, the days that the trails were open, we were out quite a bit. Um, conducting those proactive uh, and educational enforcement activities I like to see. And for the uh, fourth consecutive year in a row, we have recorded zero fatalities in the counties on our trails. So, and I know people are happy to see us out there. They're happy to see us patrol, patrolling around, hitting, and uh, you know, I really, I'm really encouraging the officers to not only be out on the trails, but make stops into the regular stopping locations, Tim Hortons, Herbs, all those ones, and you know, really interact with the snowmobiling public, answer their questions. So very pleased uh, to announce that. Um, on, the next, uh, on the next item, the mobile crisis response team, um, we continue to see just excellent re results from the team. Um, one of the things that came through was the conclusion of the uh, enhancement grant. Um, and we were very successful with our enhancement grant despite the challenges we, the hospital had in um, doing staffing. Uh, the business case that we had presented uh, that I reported to the board back in the fall that we had reported to the health network uh, that uh, unfortunately we were unsuccessful uh, with convincing the health network um, to provide us with the $125,000, or pardon me, $250,000, uh, the OPP and Cornwall Police are looking for for that stable base funding to replace what the counties currently pay for. Um, we were not successful. Uh, we were told our presentation was excellent, of very high quality. There was very, very little the ministry wanted to see in regards to measurables or support. Um, it was simply the fact that, number one, there were other communities which had greater priorities, which Health East needed to fund on a more permanent basis. Uh, and number two, Health East wants to uh, fully support the program on a annual basis as stable base funding. They just were not able to commit to that. Uh, to our very um, pleasing surprise, uh, I have reported to, I did report this to the board during our last ad hoc meeting, but the, uh, the ministry did come to us with $110,000 um, in funding to be split between the OPP and Cornwall Police um, mental health programs. The hospital uh, divvied that money up on a percentage base and also got permission from the ministry uh, to bring that money back in time, which is, which is rare. So the counties were actually, or the hospital was actually looked, able to look at their past billing and use that money to reimburse the counties. So there was, a, there was a very nice reimbursement. I believe it was between, our portion was just right around $70,000. Um, so that was a very nice uh, gesture by the, uh, by the Health East. And you know, that gives me very much hope that they are hearing and listening uh, to what we are saying. 
I know that uh, MPP Quinn and I continue to have vigorous discussions every time we talk uh, about the base funding for the MCRT. I'm hopeful as, as MPP Quinn's position and uh, seniority within the provincial government um, continues to age and he becomes more familiar with the ministers and the deputy ministers that he'll be able to lobby even further on our behalf so very very happy very very happy with that we will be resubmitting our business case again in the fall to Health East going through the same presentation um, with a few other analytic points that we will be adding on and hopefully that will uh, hopefully that will be our last time that we'll have to do that um, <clears throat> taking you to the, I will be speaking a little bit more about this in item 6.4. Um, However, I did want to report that the two-year victim services grant concluded um, and uh, that it was uh, certainly culminated with an incredible day of learning um, that we had in March at the uh, Township of South Stormont. Um, bring your attention over now to... Um, page 10 of 34. Um, I certainly want to highlight uh, that the public complaints, um, I don't know if the board saw that, but on page, at the top of your, on your first paragraph, uh, for there were nine conduct complaints. Um, I just wanted to report back to the board that of those nine conduct complaints, not a single one was substantiated. Uh, and not a single, uh, and of them, five of them were not screened in by the OIPRD. Um, as actual complaints. So the OPP system, whether or not they are screened in by the OIPRD, they report them as a complaint that has been lodged. That's the, that's the way the system works. Um, and then they also don't give us the number of complaints against our officers that are also found to be frivolous or that are unsubstantiated. So I can report to the board that all of them were either not screened in by the OIPRD unsubstantiated or found to be frivolous by the OPP. So that gives me great hope that our officers are out there, they're doing their job and they're doing great work. Just, um, and that, you know, as well though, that we have um, an oversight system which is working properly. Like people do have an outlet to file proper complaints against the police and they are being looked at, they are being looked at, but we do have that oversight. Yes, Mr. Chair? Is there an appeal process if somebody's not happy with what the uh, answer is? Yes, there is. Yes, they can appeal. So once, it, so if the if the complaint is screened, if the complaint whether the complaint is screened out or the decision that has been written, uh, if it is screened in, there is an appeal process. The person does have that time to go back to the OIPRD and appeal the decision. Um, that appeal may involve changing the content of the complaint, better explaining it. Uh, there are several different methods. Um, I haven't seen one that has been appealed be returned to the OPP. So most of the time when the OIPRD screens them out, um, they're unsubstantiated or they are found to be frivolous. Um, the OPP or the OIPRD does not, um, does not move on those appeals. Um, certainly bringing you down to uh, our staffing updates. So for the first quarter of the year, we've seen five new recruits join our detachment. Uh, for the 2023 calendar year, um, we will actually be seeing 17 new recruits uh, join the detachment, which is a pretty significant amount. It'll probably be the biggest change, um, it'll probably be the biggest change in the detachment staffing that they've seen ever. So we will probably, we probably expect in the next three years between 30 and 40 brand new officers to come through the doors. Uh, and that just has to do with retirements, people moving laterally, people being promoted. But uh, we are certainly seeing a significant shift in the staffing numbers at the detachment. Um, I'd like to highlight that uh, on September 18th, 10 officers will be receiving their 20 year medal for uh, exemplary service and uh, seven officers will be receiving awards for either life-saving or bravery. Uh, and that all occurred in the 2021-2022 calendar year. So we're very, very proud to see that we've got so many outstanding officers that are receiving those uh, awards from the Governor General's office and then from the OPP for outstanding service. 
Um, in the recognition, uh, and I'll speak a little bit more to this for, uh, for item 6.4, uh, but I would like to highlight um, just Acting Staff Sergeant Norm Lamontang, Charlene Davidson, and Jim Blanchette uh, for the incredible work they did during the Victim Services Grant, uh, especially putting together and organizing the Day of, uh, the day of Human Trafficking. Yes, Mr. Chair. I was wondering, if, would it be okay if we had sent a letter from the board to the uh, seven people who are receiving the awards, uh, you know, just thanking them and on behalf of the board? Absolutely, Mr. Chair, and I think that would be, uh, that would be fantastic and very, very much appreciated by all of the officers involved. Thank you. I can, uh, I can certainly prepare a list, Kim, for you. Okay. Uh, bringing you over to page 11, um, just highlighting uh, just at the top that we've had a reduction in uh, fatal motor vehicle collisions for the first quarter of the year, which is, which is always good. I always like to uh, see that reduction. Uh, taking you over to page 13, um, certainly, uh, Jim, you were on the board, you, were, you and Brian were both on the board last year, um, when at this time for the first quarter I had made a commitment to the board um, to see a year-over-year 20% -year uh, increase in proactive traffic, traffic safety activities. Um, I am pleased to say that we are right on par where we were are last year, and I expect that over this quarter we'll see a significant uh, improvement as well. So we are certainly up 35% uh, for the rides. And then when we look at the uh, bottom statistic, you'll see that we are, um, we are bang on par uh, for our total traffic-related charges. So we're, we're right, right there. Um, and uh, that certainly is contributing, having those proactive activities out there, that is certainly contributing to that. Uh, I know it contributes to a drop in those fatal motor vehicle collisions. Uh, just the, for, the, for the calls for service billing summary, um, just a couple of areas I would like to highlight. There, wasn't, there weren't too many um, abnormalities. Uh, certainly and very concerning to the OPP right across the board, but we do see, we continue to see an increase in sexual, reported sexual assault uh, occurrences. Um, we continue to try to find what the root cause is. Uh, certainly... Uh, for Mr. Chair and for the rest of the board, um, one of the proactive solutions the detachment will be taking is that engagement we spoke about during the, uh, with the schools. So I have uh, meetings scheduled for August with all four school superintendents uh, to discuss our activities in the school for the new school year and what exactly we will be bringing forward and what exactly they would like to see uh, in the schools. But certainly, um, you know, uh, sexual consent and what that exactly means. Our community safety officer has been told uh, very clearly that that is a topic of uh, that I want him presenting on, especially at the at the higher at the higher grades, right? And that, so that there is an understanding, right, about you know the consequences of those actions, whether it be through. Um, whether it be through social media or actual physical touch or not even, you know, we want to we wanna make sure that we're educating our youth on a, bro of a wide variety and a broad variety of uh, topics in that subject. Uh, taking you now to page, uh, just taking you over to page 22 of uh, my report, just back to looking at the... Uh, uh, the records management system. Um, the only area that I will highlight for the board is the property crime. Again, have stolen goods. Um, the this is not occurring within the. It is occurring within the boundaries of Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry. But this is uh, the 500% increase uh, is a direct result of the recovered stolen motor vehicles that we are getting on the 400 series highways. Uh, we continue to recover, you know between five and seven a week um, on the 401. So, and all originating out of uh, Toronto. So that is why you are seeing that big jump um, in that statistic right there. The OPP has, uh, as you probably have seen, uh, there have been several funding announcements from the provincial government. One having to do with bail reform, uh, the other having to do directly with the stolen motor vehicle um, 
uh, epidemic, and they'll be putting significant resources in, um, not just provincially, but this will be a national project to try and uh, put a dent in this problem. So we are hopeful that um, uh, certainly that number starts to come down, but I can assure the board that, you know, these are all, um, these are all very good arrests and, you know, we're, we're stopping, we're stopping crime from, you know, making it to uh, another province. Um, and barring any questions, Mr. Chair, that is all that I have for my uh, detachment commander's report. Hey, thank you. Is, are there any questions or any concerns with respect to this part of the report? Seeing that Jim, no? We do have a motion. I'll ask uh, Kimberly to read it, please. That the OPP report for January to March 2023 be accepted for information purposes. I have a mover, Jim. Seconder is Jamie. All in favor? Carried. Thank you for that. Okay. We'll let you, Mark, carry on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item uh, 6.2. Mm -hmm. um, so I will take the, um, the board over to page 31 of uh, the report. Um, attached to uh, the report is an example of um, the detachment commander uh, performance evaluation, which was developed by Tay Valley Township in Lanark County. Uh, my previous detachment in Lanark County, uh, Tay Valley Township, uh, according to Section uh, 10.9 of the Police Services Act, um, does have a responsibility to monitor and to monitor the activities of the detachment commander. Uh, the board took it upon themselves to provide the detachment commander with a yearly evaluation, which was then um, presented at a meeting. Um, the findings were presented at a meeting uh, with the detachment commander. The detachment commander was presented with the opportunity to comment and discuss with the board. And then um, that report was forwarded on to regional command, uh, East Region Command. I bring this to the board's attention uh, simply because um, this is something that's never been done in SDNG and I just bring it to the board's attention for consideration whether this is something the board feels is necessary or they would like to participate in on a yearly basis. Um, this is just an example of what the performance evaluation looks like. It can certainly be modified to however the board uh, would like or you know they can they can modify it, they can add categories, they can remove categories. I certainly do not, if the board chooses to do this, I certainly would not want this to be a time burden on the board. Um, however, it can serve as a very useful tool, uh, not only for the board, but for myself in developing myself as a leader and ensuring that I'm providing the board uh, with sufficient notification, significant communication and information, as well as um, it can provide my regional command with some additional information that when we are working on my uh, performance evaluation, my yearly performance evaluation, and some of my goals, this can be incorporated into our annual discussions. Uh, again, Mr. Chair, I leave it up to uh, you and the board for discussion. Okay. Um, when we do go through this uh, performance report evaluation, you wanna do this together? We'll do it together rather than individually as a board? I think it'll be the best way to do it, and that way we'll at least have a consensus of what we're all thinking. Okay, we'll do that uh, separately. Go ahead, and Jamie. I just, I just got time for the questions we've got that seems appropriate, and I don't think we have to rewrite the book if it's uh, already. already there. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Through you, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. I can tweak and format it and so it's SDG specific, and, and then the board can facilitate the process. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you make the space where we put our comments like we really did? <laughs> 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 Those big boxes are there. <laughs> uh, moving on, Mr. Chair, to item 6.3. I, uh, mm -hmm. so I, I certainly spoke to this in my uh, initial report when I was providing it, but uh, just again, I just would like to highlight that $110,000 that we did receive from uh, 
Health East for that one-time MCERT funding. Uh, I, and the reason I bring this up as a separate, a separate item for discussion is I, through the board, uh, I certainly would like, um, or first of all, I would like to thank the board for their continuous support of this program. Um, I could tell you that in conversations with my detachment um, and the members, if we had to eliminate any program within the, our current detachment that we do outside of frontline policing, MCERT would be the last they would pick. So, and that is a, that is a consensus right across the board. Um, so it obviously has a tremendous impact on the work they do. Um, and you know, just the, just the collaboration we have had with the Cornwall Community Hospital. Um, through, the, through the board, Mr. Chair, I would certainly also like to pass on the message to County Council for their support. I realize that our funding model is unorthodox and it really, and I will forever say that that funding should be coming from the Ministry of Health. That is the, that is the you know, um, that is the stream that it should be coming through. However, we are extremely fortunate to have such a support, so many municipalities and such a supporting county council and the United Counties that see the value in this program and truly understand the paradigm shift that it has made in policing activities. Um, and I'd just like to say that, you know, I continue to be committed to uh, advocating and fighting where I have to, um, maybe even, you know, getting myself in hot water with the ministry from time to time, um, but you know, advocating to ensure that we're gonna get that stable base funding. So I, just, I certainly wanted to uh, highlight that, thank both the board and through, through Mr. Chair up to uh, County Council and the United Counties for their incredible support. It's, it's obvious you know, from this one-time funding injection that the ministry and Health East see tremendous value in our programs in SDNG and Cornwall. Um, and that they're willing to work with us in different ways uh, to try and uh, continue to fund the program. Pending any questions, Mr. Chair, from anybody from the board? Yeah, just uh, through, uh, through the chair and uh, just to recognize uh, the detachment commander's report, uh, I, I think that, you know, evolution is always supposed to be deemed to be a positive process and I think that we can't underestimate the, the leadership that uh, that Mark has provided on this and some of his staff to get us to this point and uh, I can only concur that when I talk to my colleagues in the healthcare world and everywhere else that this imp this program impacts that no doubt that this will become a permanent solution it's we're on the way to doing it it's got some temporary bumps in the road, but I don't think that anybody contests the value of this, and, and uh, I think we ne need to recognize uh, Mark's leadership and his detachments as well. Just a comment, thanks. Thank you very much for that, Jim. Uh, very, very much appreciated. I can uh, also, Mr. Chair, I guess I should just uh, say that the, um, in regards to that, we also, the grant cycle for the MCERT, MCERT enhancement grant came to an end. Um, however, the new application has come out and it is just before the counties now for signing and submission to the, uh, to the ministry and we are, very, um, we are very hopeful that we'll get that injection in funding uh, for this year. I, I can give the board the early heads up that this year I did not apply for any staffing funding. Uh, simply because the hospital could not guarantee they would have uh, sufficient time to recruit, uh, hire, train, and retain somebody. It's only a one-year grant cycle this year as compared to two. So in consultation with the ministry, I decided to look at other items. Uh, mainly, probably the biggest chunk was training. So since the inception of the program, the uh, program has actually had no formal training um, outside of, you know, a little bit of in-house here and there. So we've asked for a significant amount of money um, to provide the program with some additional uh, crisis training uh, and in different areas they feel that the field is expanded um, and they could really use some training. 
Uh, item 6.4, Mr. Chair, uh, Victim Services Grant Update. Uh, you will recall during our last uh, meeting that um, when I gave an update to the Victim Services Grant for the last quarter of the year, um, we did run into some difficulties, which I, I certainly did put on myself. Um, where one of the partners in the grant, we had sort of lost communication with them and um, we, uh, we fell behind in uh, meeting some of the objectives uh, of the grant. I will tell you that uh, after consultation with that partner and permission from the ministry, with correspondence that I've already provided the board uh, and the counties, uh, the ministry agreed to allow me to modify uh, some of the parameters of the grant, mainly the, uh, mainly the budget. Um, we engaged one of our partners and what we did was the main, the main portion that we were behind on was uh, the training portion. So the ministry allowed me to modify the budgetary items um, to ensure that the training occurred. And what we did was, and I'll bring the board's attention to page 24 of 34, um, which is an article that was produced in the uh, standard freeholder. Um, and um, you will see that we, uh, we formulated a single day of learning um, for human trafficking. We had uh, multiple guest speakers. Uh, we had almost 200 attendees, which is almost unheard of from not only police, but all of our community partners. Uh, and it was one of the probably the most successful anti-human trafficking conferences uh, that's been seen in Eastern Ontario. There are municipalities that are double, triple our size, Kingston, Ottawa, they, you know, they maybe get 100 in attendees at theirs. We, we pulled in 200. Um, that was at the, um, the hall at the uh, township of South Stormont. Um, and it was just a tremendous day of learning. Um, as I mentioned uh, in the recognition and rewards, um, I had to, I couldn't take on this task alone. I certainly had, I did, just did not have the ability to do with it. Um, so I asked, I tasked uh, Acting Staff Sergeant Norm Lamontang, Sergeant um, Charlene Davidson and PC Jim Blanchette to each take on a portion of assisting me with the grant. So I was the direct contact with the ministry in ensuring that uh, all of the uh, proper permissions were given, all of the proper um, um, approvals and then I was the uh, I was the final reporter back to the ministry but they are the really one they are the ones that really did all the legwork you know within three months once we got that permission from the ministry within three months they had to put together you know they had fifty thousand dollars they had to put together uh, a conference for um, and again it was a it was a it was a smashing hit we only received nothing but the higher highest praises uh, we had f six crown attorneys from Quebec come and join us and they said it was the best conference they've ever been on, uh, reported back to us. So yeah, we were, we were extremely fortunate, again, um, highlighting that. And again, this was another grant where oftentimes um, these grants are done in collaboration with the United Counties and the board. So I would like to thank the board again for, for their support um, with these grants. I realize that, you know, that we, um, we often use the county resources to assist us with them and sometimes the timelines are a little short or you know there are a few staff at the counties that pull pull their hair out uh, trying to uh, report on them or get them submitted uh, i'm very cognizant so very very lucky number one to have the board support for these grants um, every time you know i come up with one and say hey we're going to do this uh, but number two through you mr chair very, very fortunate uh, that we have the support of the United Counties as well as a, as a partner. Um, I would like also to just to highlight, I know Todd's in the room right now. Um, Todd certainly provided us with some technical expertise on that day, um, which we couldn't have done it without him uh, getting it properly set up from our IT to just the presentation. So through you, Mr. Chair, a big thanks to uh, Todd, Todd sitting back there for all of his help. Um, and finally, I would just like to report back to the board uh, that um, the board uh, did bring a resolution where the uh, two pieces of uh, equipment that we had, or the three pieces of equipment that we had, have all been donated to a community partner. So Maison Interlude did, it, did accept the first 90 inch uh, smart TV. Um, Naomi House was not able to accept it. Um, they just didn't have the, it was just too big for their space. 
Um, so our next partner was uh, Victim Services Koala Place. And Koala Place is actually in the process of setting up a virtual, um, a virtual room at their location where child victims can testify remotely uh, and they needed a smart TV. So it was just good fortune that we were able to provide that uh, to them and that will not go into their capital budget. So that's something they will not have to purchase out of their budget for that. So they were very grateful for, uh, they're very grateful and thankful to the board uh, for that donation. Uh, items if pending any questions, Mr. Chair, or from anybody? Well, I was planning to attend that uh, uh, session that, uh, for human trafficking, but I was in the hospital getting surgery that day. Are you planning to do this again in the near future? Uh, we certainly have. So, in our, so we have applied for the second uh, Victim Services Grant. Um, it's, again, it's once again a year. We've partnered up with some new partners this time, and we will be having some training sessions. Um, the next one, Mr. Chair, focuses on intimate partner violence, child sexual exploitation, and human trafficking. So we have combined all three of those. And yes, we will be having a day of learning. Uh, for police and all of our all of our partners we are not sure which topic we are going to pick uh, specifically to have that day of learning um, we're gonna get once once we find out about the approval of the grant um, we will form the steering committee um, and the steering committee uh, will then decide which topic we're going to present on we would like to certainly bring something um, that hasn't been presented on potentially it could potentially be child sexual exploitation. Uh, it's a topic that um, continues to be a problem through, throughout uh, North America and the world, and something that hasn't been something that hasn't been presented on. Um, we're very cognizant that it's a sensitive subject, so our initial discussions with the partners that we've um, spoken to the grant about are to have it about a day of how to deal, like how to support those victims. So not the actual phenomenon and getting into the phenomenon, but actually, you know, how do you support those victims um, more, uh, more specifically. So, and if we, do, if we did certainly Mr. Chair or somebody from the board, we would certainly like uh, your, your attendance because as always, you are always included as a partner um, in any grant that we apply for, and we love to have your uh, support there. Um, I did receive an email just this morning that I uh, had just forwarded to you and Kimberly. Um, it looks like a notification that we've received $39,966 for a victim support grant. So is that for yes? Th this is for the past. This is for the past one. Okay. Um, and Rebecca, yes, we were waiting. We were waiting on that installment. Okay. Um, so this is for the this is for the pa this is for the past grant. Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. Our um, and uh, those funds will be distributed by the um, by the counties. We already have the uh, the right. accounting's all done. Rebecca okay. and I have done uh, done everything, so she'll be ready to distribute uh, distribute that. Thank you. Uh, finally, Mr. Chair, item 6.5. Um, as the board is aware, every year uh, the uh, SDNG Police Services Board is has a budget of community initiative, community initiative budget, and I'm asked to uh, bring forth um, uh, bring forth community partners, specifically who assist us in community policing or who, who are policing partners, um, to distribute uh, donations and funds to. Um, so I have picked, uh, and do I, Kim, um, Kim, did I have the amount right? Three thousand? Do I? Is my was my math right there? What was the what was the total amount? Because I have, I have six for six hundred, each. Was it three thousand or thirty five? Is thirty five hundred? Thirty six. What is the amount that we have? Oh, do I have five? Okay. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Potentially, I might adjust those numbers just to bring it so that we get the, uh, so that we get the full amount. Um, but certainly, looking at the list, um, I would like to see donations this year go go to the Glengarry Mental Health Initiative. Um, and just looking at uh, Mayor McDonald, are you aware of this uh, initiative, Mayor McDonald? I, I wasn't. I actually found out through my brother-in-law, who was the MC photographer for this. Uh, the Glengarry Mental Health Initiative is a youth uh, health initiative that started in Glengarry County. 
uh, and it was specific to providing um, youth mental health services uh, to youth in the county during the pandemic where they saw a, um, where they saw a great need. Um, it has since continued to expand and this past weekend they had uh, an event in Apple Hill where they were trying to raise, I believe, $25,000. Uh, and when I heard about this, I, I, I wish our meeting had been a couple of weeks earlier, um, but I certainly, um, I would certainly say that that is a very important, is, as we deal with mental health on a regular basis, and certainly there aren't enough services available to youth mental health in the counties, um, that that would be a very good initiative to donate to. Um, Pardon me. Uh, I, I will come up. I, I'll just do some quick. I'll just do some quick math in my head. Uh, but I, I would certainly say that we could do eight hundred and fifty dollars. Eight fifty. Um, Baldwin uh, Baldwin House in uh, Cornwall, which uh, is a uh, which is a women's shelter. We. Uh, we often, when we have victims of intimate partner violence or any other type of um, violence towards them or their children, that is a resource that we impl that we use on a regular basis, um, and uh, certainly very uh, very deserving. Um, Eight hundred for them, if that's uh, an agreement of the board. Um, Saint Vincent de Paul, certainly uh, up in Alexandria, being one of our larger uh, municipalities there as the board may be aware their services are in continuous need um, especially when it comes to their food bank um, as the board may or may not be aware um, cash donations are actually the best donations that we can give um, you know giving food or clothing or other things that actually takes resources but cash donations actually increase their buy they have an increased buying power that we do not because they are a charitable organization so i certainly would like to see um uh 850 go to uh saint vincent de paul uh glengarry memorial hospital uh, to their charitable, uh, to their charitable um, organization, um, eight hundred to them as they've recently, um, they recent or last year they completed the renovations of a victim-centered family room uh, within the hospital. They they did spend a significant amount, but the renovation did not complete itself uh, completely, and they were looking for some additional um, funds to finish off the room. Certainly when we, again, uh, that's a room that the police use to meet with victims, to meet with uh, family members, so on and so forth. So an excellent uh, community initiative. Uh, 800 there. Uh, the Dundas Food Bank, uh, once again, food insecurity being a huge problem and uh, within, within the population in general at the moment with the rising costs and rising costs of inflation. Um, Although not a direct partner, it is, a, it is something that we support on a regular basis through our food drive, through our auxiliaries, and they can always use the, uh, they can always use the help. Uh, 8.50 for them as well. And finally, the, um, and finally, the uh, Winchester District Memorial Hospital uh, Foundation. I know that they have multiple projects ongoing right now, including the uh, new Dundas Mayor, which or new Dundas Manor, which they will be um, they're looking to build. So that uh, they are another very important community partner that can always use our uh, use our support. Yeah, eight fifty, please. <laughs> uh, pending any changes or any other organizations that the uh, the board might see as worthy to receive those funds uh, through you, Mr. Chair, for your approval.
It reads that the SDG Police Services Board approved the following donations as part of the 2023 Community Initiative Budget. Glengarry, Glengarry Mental Health Initiative, $850. Baldwin House, $800. St. Vincent de Paul, $850. Glengarry Memorial Hospital, $800. Dundas Food Bank, $850. And Winchester and District Memorial Hospital, $850. It reads that the SDG Police Services Board proceed in camera pursuant to Section 34.4b of the Police Services Act. Intimate financial or personal matters or other matters may be disclosed of such a nature having regard to the circumstances that the desirability of avoiding their disclosure in the interest of any person affected or in the public interest outweighs the desirability of adhering to the principle that proceedings be open to the public for a matter related to facilities.
The motion reads that the SDG Police Services Board rise and reconvene in open session. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This was just an addition uh, that I forgot to um, for, that I forgot to send to Kimberly, but uh, it is just in regards to OPP seized property. Um, the last time the board had a conversation with the detachment about the OPP seized property was back in two thousand and five. Through you, uh, we had an item in 2021. We had all that money that we donated to uh, Seaway Valley Crime Stoppers. Ah, okay. So that was a tiny discussion on the matter. Okay. Um, so, uh, so maybe I should maybe I should retract that. Uh, so, the last big discussion that was had was about with regards to OPP seized property was in 2021. However, the document that we have, which dictates how we deal with uh, seized or forfeited property, uh, well, hasn't been updated since 2005. So I simply bring this to the board's attention as uh, we recently had an audit of our main vault in Long Sioux. So the OPP won the toaster. Uh, the, the, our detachment won the toaster for having the most property in all of the OPP in any vault. Um, so one of the things we are vigorously doing is reducing the amount of property. Um, and one of, the, uh, one of the challenges, so we have some things that we sort of, um, that we need to look at with regards to property through the board and how we deal with that property. So we have three, we have four categories of property. Number one, we have liquor. Liquor should be fairly simple. If it's if the liquor's open, it gets dumped. It it has to be disposed of. It has no use. Um, we have to decide on what would be done with seized liquor. So seized liquor that is still under seal because it can't be auctioned, it can't be, um, we can't auction it at Rito Auctions, and unless the board decides to destroy it, we do have another option, such as collecting it into a gift basket and using it as a raffle prize for the Crime Stoppers golf tournament on a yearly basis. The second property is drugs. Obviously, um, the board, I'm fairly certain the board does not want us retaining or re re reselling, uh, reselling those, and. We <laughs> put them in the basket. Um, uh, the third one is firearms. All firearms that are forfeited or seized or destroyed by the OPP. Um, and but the the big the the next two actually it's actually five are general property. So some of the general property um, I sign off. For example, tools. So tools that are seized. Tools that are seized or tools that are forfeited over back to the crown, I may use my detachment commander's direction to say, hey, like we need, the, this drill would really serve the detachment well, so we're gonna hold on to that drill. Uh, but for the rest of it, most of the time, the, uh, the process is for us to bring it to auction, as is the policy back in 2005. It is what happens afterwards, after it goes to auction, and we are in the process of renewing our contract with Rito Auction, for seized property. And I would bring it to the board that um, I would, for discussion at our next meeting or a decision at our next meeting is to what do we want to do with um, the proceeds of um, the, that seized property coming from Rito Auctions. If it goes, it cannot be returned to the detachment itself because the detachment does not have a bank account. So any revenues that come into the OPP actually go back to the Ministry of Finance. Those revenues that come into the Ministry of Finance would then be what we call a credit or an other shown in our detachment revenues. They would, because they came back from, uh, because they came from seized property, that would then be credited back to the municipality on the policing bill through other revenues. So like criminal record checks, other revenues that the detachment take in. The other idea that I have brought forth to Kimberly was that the United Counties do have the ability to intake funds into the account where the board and I could, uh, on a quarterly basis, we could look at, we could use the United Counties as our, as our bank for seized property or, don't, or auction property. That could go to the United Counties and we could have an itemized list and amount that's come into the counties and that between the board and myself, we could decide of those funds what we would like to do with them. Uh, potentially select a recipient to donate the proceeds to. 
similar to the exercise we just went to. If we found somebody that was worthy on a quarterly or yearly basis, or we had a, you know, a charitable organization, a, a, it has to be a policing partner. Um, so if we had a policing partner that we really thought was worthy of that, um, the board also has, and Kim, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, they do have some discretion though that if the detachment has an initiative, right, they can bring it back to the detachment. Um, so for example, you know, auxiliary Christmas party, um, I know that we are using some of the funds to repair the speed sign at the moment um, that was given to county council, but other, all those things. So I leave it up to the board for discussion. The fifth portion is cash. So we have just, and it's timing couldn't be perfect, we just had a large cash seizure yesterday, um, which was a forfeiture over to the OPP. So there will be, at the next meeting, there will certainly be a significant amount of cash we will, the board will need to decide how we deal with. Um, and, it's a, it, and it's a fairly significant amount, so certainly bringing that up to the board just sort of as, um, just to float some ideas and get things percolating, uh, Mr. Chair, in regards to how we want to proceed moving forward. Did I miss anything? Can no, we? through you, uh, Mr. Chair, the policy is pretty straightforward. I can share it with you later today, uh, but there's a process for the OPP detachment to dispose of the property if it's the auction matter. And then number five, section five just reads, the money derived from the sale shall be directed to the United Counties of Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry Police Services Board for use in proactive policing. So it's pretty general. No, the policy's in place and we'll report back at the next meeting with, with an itemized list and a process going forward. So through you, Mr. Chair, maybe I could get a motion, Mr. Chair, through Kimberly, just to clarify that through the auction process that we will be signing the recipient of the auctioned funds would be the United Counties. Um, would that be acceptable, Mr. Chair? Oh, I see a problem. Okay, I will move her, Jamie. Of course, Jim. Number two. Do you want to read the motion? It would just be that the PSB, uh, the Police Services Board, approve that the board be uh, that accept the auctioned funds from stolen and seized property from the SDG detachment. In favor? Motion's carried. It reads that the meeting adjourned to the call of the chair. All, oh, first, second. <laughs> All in favor? Carried. Thank you.